Good morning, it's Friday morning, Dominic Steele and Daily Bible Time, and the Apostle Paul has been saying as we've been going through 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I have rights, but I choose not to use them. And at verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 9, he broadens the application to make it much wider than whether or not the Christian minister gets paid. And if you look with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, sentence 19, though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone. So Paul says, I'm free. I'm not in bondage. I have rights. I'm not owned. I can do whatever I like. So what does Paul do? He makes himself a slave. He restricts himself in order, quote, to win as many as possible. Now, this plays out in all sorts of ways. Verse 20, to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I've become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessings. Paul doesn't see his identity as a Christian Jew and so insist on those rights, but neither does Paul see his identity as a Christian Gentile. He thinks of himself as coming from a third position from which he can flex to win both the Jews and the Gentiles. And so when he's with the Jews, he ate their kosher food, even though he's free to eat meat. And um, and I can imagine, myself making the one-off sacrifice but Paul sacrificed on his diet for years big changes big personal sacrifices for years I mean there's a actually a famous example of a Chinese Christian a Christian missionary to China um, Hudson Taylor he died um, well 102 years ago he's the founder of the Chinese inland mission uh, he was the first Western missionary to China to start to wear his hair long and braided like the Chinese men of his time and to put on Chinese clothes and eat Chinese food and many of his fellow Western missionaries at the time mocked him. But Hudson Taylor had thought through the issues of this chapter. What was essential to the gospel and non-negotiable and what was a cultural preference and can be flexed on? And so actually this is actually how we think as Christian ministers if I flex on the non-negotiable um, that will influence the way I dress as you go out to represent Jesus. Um, uh, if I'm speaking on a church weekend away, I'll, I'll wear weekend clothes. Like if I'm giving an after dinner address in the city workers function in York Street, wear suit and tie. Um, and, and you do it to the Jews, I become like the Jews to win the Jews. So does that mean Paul, me, any minister of Christ Jesus is Mr. Wishy Washy, no backbone, two face? One moment wear a tie to win one group, one next moment put on different clothes to win another. Is Paul pretending to be somebody he isn't? Is he telling us to pretend to be someone we aren't? No, I don't think Paul is Mr. Wishy-Washy. I think Paul is calling on us to have such a mature, nuanced understanding of the gospel that we can be, on the one hand, fanatically rigid on the things that really are essential, and on the other hand, extraordinarily flexible on the non-essentials. He wants us to have such a deep grasp of the gospel that we'll know where to be rigid, and where to bend. The person who has a Christian life that is just endless rules, has no room to flex, that rigid Christian is in the end the weak, immature Christian. But the person who is all flex, who's just driven hither and thither with no roots, no foundation, no convictions, no self-identity, no non-negotiable values, they're just all over the place in their behavior, their morals. They're not flexing, they're just all over the place people. They too are the weak, immature Christian. They don't hold anything stable enough for them to win anyone too. They might fit in with everyone, but they won't win anyone because they won't have anything of substance to win them to. Now, I don't know, you're watching this morning. Perhaps you identify with a rigid Christian or perhaps you identify with a fit in everywhere Christian. You don't have anything that you stand for yourself. Now, let me be clear, Paul stands for something. There are things that Paul will not bend on and um, I just said we need to put aside our rights in order to win people to the gospel, to see people saved. We need to bend on a whole range of things to help people fit in. But where will I draw the line? What should I not bend on? I mean, to reach the sexually immoral guttermouth non-Christian, should I become a sexually immoral guttermouth Christian? No. Chapter 9, verse 21. To those not having the law, 
I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. Paul's not free from God's law. Paul is under Christ's law. And there are some things that Paul will not bend on. Just because the culture we work in is sexually promiscuous, or that you work in a culture where people get drunk all the time, doesn't mean you should be promiscuous and drunk in order to relate to them. You're not free from Christ's law. Let me give you two quick stories to illustrate where I got this right and then wrong. I remember one radio journalist coming around to dinner at our house a long time ago with her boyfriend, and they'd had a discussion in the car, should we take a bottle of wine to take to Dominic's place? Well, Dominic's a Christian, I don't think he drinks. What? And so when they arrived, I welcomed them and said, now, Stuart, would you like a beer? And um, I didn't see this, but he apparently looked daggers at her. But later in the evening, when we got into conversation and what it meant to be a Christian, um, she asked, well, Dominic, how come you're a Christian and you had a beer? And I think I was able to explain the essence of the gospel wasn't abstinence, but the gospel was about relating rightly with the creator of the universe through his son, Jesus, who died to pay for our rebellion. And people who know me well will tell you that I'm not a big beer drinker. I mean, I'm, I hardly drink beer at all, probably an average of one beer a year or something. But in evangelizing Stuart, I thought it was important to have a beer that night. I mean, Stuart probably would have been happy to get drunk, but as a Christian, I'm not free from Christ's law, verse 21, so that it would have been wrong for me to have got drunk with him. Now, there's an incident where I think I got it right. Here's where, one where I got it wrong. Also a long time ago, we were um, talking to people about Jesus, doing stranger evangelism, out walking up, um, and we were talking to this bloke, and he was a bloke who was dropping a swear word every couple of words. And... I changed my language to suit him in order to have rapport to the non-Christian um, uh, and I, I used a swear word in the conversation and I guess I had in mind to be a Jew to, like a Jew to win the Jews but on reflecting on 1 Corinthians 9 21 I've decided I was wrong I'm not free from Christ's law Christ's law is clear um, actually Colossians 3 8 now you must rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. So there are some things you can bend on. Sometimes I'll bend and have an alcoholic drink. But some things, rigid as tense, I'll steal on. And actually swearing is one of them that um, you don't want to be like a Jew to win the Jews on the issue of swearing. Thanks for joining us uh, on Daily Bible Time today. And uh, let me lead us in prayer. Our Father God, we thank you for this time reflecting on your word, and we pray that you'd help us to be people who do flex in order to reach our friends for Jesus, but also to be people who know when to be firm. And Lord, I do just pray about this issue of swearing, which is a challenge issue for so many Christians, and we pray that you'd help us to, um, uh, to not use filthy language from our lips, even as we're evangelizing our non-Christian friends. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. And we'll look forward to your company Monday morning on Daily Bible Time.